On a recent video I put out, I extolled the virtues of the Panasonic G9 and Micro Four Thirds in general. And uh, it was interesting, some of the comments I got back, uh, people were basically saying, it's quite a big camera, it's not that compact. And, and that's true. For Micro Four Thirds, this is, this is quite a beast. It's probably the size of a, a, a mini DSLR. And it's quite hefty as well, but still very capable. So what if you wanted to get something a bit smaller, but uh, still use Micro Four Thirds? Well, you could go down to something more compact like this Olympus. This is an OMD. EM5 Mark I came out in about 2012, so a pretty much a vintage model now. Very compact, a little kit zoom on it, very simple and straightforward. Uh, also, I have a couple of very simple, straightforward extra zooms I use with it, a 9 to 18 Olympus and a 45 to 150. Now, with this little outfit, I have everything covered from 9mm to 300mm in full frame terms. But it's only 16 megapixels, so you know people ask how can that possibly turn out a good result? Which brings me to the second point people raised on the video, which was can you trust such a small sensor to deliver quality images, and particularly in print sizes, because that's you know where, where the uh, the rubber meets the road. That's what really matters to people. So I got to thinking I'd actually like to go out and do this test with using my old Olympus 16 megapixel camera, sort of first generation Micro Four Thirds and shoot a panoramic image and print it out on my Epson 3880. Now that can go to 37 inches natively. It's a bit of a panoramic crop because it uh, can only feed paper in through one direction, A2 width, but three foot wide. So that would make quite an interesting comparison, I think. Uh, it'd be very useful, I think, to show how good Micro Four Thirds is and why I think it's quite capable of being used for just about any application. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, pack my gear up, I'm going to head off tomorrow and go shoot something and make the print. So here I am, I've come down to the North Wales coast. This is Llandidno, a seaside town with a beautiful Victorian pier. Now the reason I've chosen this is uh, twofold. First off, it is perfect for the panoramic crop I want to do on my printer so I can take a narrow slice out of this image, 2.5 to 1 ratio. And secondly, it's got a lot of fine detail in that pier and there's going to be a heavy contrast range between the, uh, the dark shadows underneath and also the bright sky. Hopefully you can see a bit of the sunrise coming up behind me. So absolutely perfect for this test. Okay, the sun is coming up beautifully behind me. I mean, I hoped for a bit of a sunrise this morning, but this is turning out to be far better than I expected. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's mild as well, considering it's the end of winter. Now I'm using the EM5 with my standard zoom lens, which is a 14 to 45. So very, very straightforward 28 to 90 zoom using about 50 millimeters and at f6.3. So pretty good apertures, pretty sharp at this point and I'm manually focusing in on the pier, in on the little struts. It's very easy to focus on those, very sharp, very well defined. And I've got a three stop soft grad on there as well, just a cheap graduated resin filter, just to tame those sky values and to save me having to bracket. Now, although it's not been much of a climb to get here, it's only a few hundred feet up a steep bank, um, the gear is extremely light and I'm carrying a couple of vlogging cameras and a nice hot coffee and a decent sized tripod yet still there's hardly any weight whatsoever it's far lighter than the G9 outfit that uh, I took up the mountain a few weeks ago and that was lightweight so I could see no reason why I wouldn't use this outfit for absolutely any purpose that involved strenuous efforts climbing walking long distances and I don't think I'm giving up anything in quality I honestly don't I mean we'll have to wait till we get back and process the image to see for sure but I'm convinced this is going to make a fantastic three foot wide print now in addition to the uh, standard lens I've been shooting with for the past 20 minutes or so I've also now fitted my telephoto zoom which is a 45 to 150 so that's a 90 to 300 equivalent and I've zoomed right in on the end of the pier um, it's going to make it a much tighter crop it's going to give me the option of making a really really tight close panoramic later it's got no real artistic merit it's more just a proof of the technical qualities of these very cheap lenses
And just as a final bonus in this uh, bonus packed video, I've included a very wide shot with the Olympus 9 to 18. Now this has always been seen as the cheap option for wide angles on micro four thirds. It's a very, very small, very simple lens, just got a 52 millimeter thread. Now this is equivalent to an 18 millimeter to 36 millimeter lens and it's considered slightly soft, but I've taken a wide shot at both the nine and the 18 millimeter end just to show you how good I think it is and why I still carry it. Well, it's just past sunrise now and I think I've had the best of the light for the image I'm trying to capture here to show you the large print. So I'm actually going to wrap it up. It may seem early, uh, I haven't been here that long, but I've got what I've come for and that's what I need. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to prove. Uh, shot with all three lenses. Don't think they've got any great particular photographic merit, but uh, yeah, they'll make a nice print. And uh, let's head off back home, get into the, uh, the office, process the images. I'll show you that stage as well and have a print made. Okay, so I'm back from the trip now. I've got the images off the card and into Lightroom. So just go through the quick process of showing you uh, what I'm going to do with them, uh, which one I'm going to pick and how I'm going to make the print. Okay, to save some time, this is the, the image I've ended up choosing. I decided in the end to go with the slightly longer shot taken with the telephoto zoom. Now this is shot at f7.1 ISO 200 and I chose it because it allows me to see plenty of detail within the pier structure. Uh, it's a nice sharp image as you can see. It also has a good range of tones in there. There's plenty of shadow detail knocking around and it has some rocks in the foreground which have also got a little bit of detail in them there but it's this sort of fine detail which I'm aiming for which is why I want to make a large print because I think that the, this particular image will uh, show off the virtues of the basic Micro Four Thirds camera kit. So again, I'm not going to go through all the processing because that could take quite some time. So we'll skip through here and uh, come back in about 15, 20 minutes when I've chosen the, uh, the setting, the crop and sharpened it up a little bit. Okay, so after working on the image for about 40 minutes or so, I've come up with the, the crop and the angle I like. This is going to give me the right format for my printer, because as I said earlier, I want to use my Epson 3880. I don't want to send this one off. I want to maximize the quality, which means doing it all myself. All I've done is crop the image down to a 10 to four crop, and I've done a little bit of dodging and burning. So I've brought a bit of a vignette around the outside of the image here. Also lightened the structure slightly and taken some of the shadows out. But largely it's, it's the same image. There's not a great deal of difference in there. And if you zoom in, you can see, there we go, that it's pretty much as I started, just enhanced a little bit. Now that's gonna be fine for the smaller prints for the sort of A3 size. But when I'm making a much larger print, I'm going to need to enhance it more, which means take it into Photoshop. So let's just drop into Photoshop quickly now and show you what I've done with the, the full size image, the one I'm gonna to make to three feet. Okay, so I've been into Photoshop and I've resized the image. Now this is resized based on my printer settings. I need 360 dots per inch for my Epson and I want a 36 inch print. So I've come up with a print which is 12,960 pixels wide from the native 4,500. So this is quite an enlargement. It's sort of over enhanced, over sharpened. Now I've run this through Nick Output Sharpener with the default settings for my printer. And it looks terrible on the screen, but if this was printed now at this sort of size, it would probably wrap around my garage. So yeah, it's not gonna be this big, but this is the level of sharpening and detail I need to make a big print. And it's gonna look a lot better, I promise you once we output it onto my printer. So 
Let's go through and just drop these out to the printer in various sizes and then we'll just have a quick look at how they are on the screen and also talk through maybe some ways they could be improved. Okay, so let's have a look at the actual prints themselves, starting with a measly little A4 print, which is, well, you know, you, it'd be fine from your camera phone, so I'm not even going to spend more than another second looking at that because it disgusts me. A3, A3. Now, this is a, a sort of typical size you hear people knocking about for. Oh, it's the biggest you can make out of micro four thirds. Yes, that's about it. You know, native 300 dots per inch. It'll start to degrade after that. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's so sharp, it's ridiculous, and there's absolutely no noise whatsoever in it, but that's only A3, and A3 is nothing these days. So let's go to A2. Can you see that one, A2? Now, A2 is getting to the size now, you're sort of talking about 23, 24 inches in the horizontal, where people start to say you must have full frame because you need that resolution, you need those bigger pixels and more of them. Well, I can tell you that this is absolutely razor sharp with no noise and no artifacts, no little jaggies. All this pier detail is razor sharp, fantastic. And the shadows look good as well. I can see detail down in these rocks in this foreground. And this little pavilion area, I can't even explain how sharp the railings are and the various little bits of wire hanging down from the pier and this little top here of the pavilion. It's fantastic. But anyway, that's A2. Now. This is what I wanted to get to. This is the 30, let's see if I can get it all in. This is the 36 inch print. Okay, so this is getting onto the, the size you would expect a really, really decent high resolution full frame or medium format camera to shoot, or even a, a large format film camera. Now, just look at that, if you can get it all in on the screen. Now, believe it or not, this looks absolutely pin sharp. I mean, I'm looking at it and there's a tiny bit of noise creeping in now uh, into the detailed areas, but it's still absolutely fantastic. And I'm viewing it so it's sort of like, you know, sort of 10 inches away and I can't see any problems with that whatsoever. I'd be happy to have that on my wall, no need for a stitch panoramic. And that's made of a 16 megapixel micro four thirds camera from 2012 with a little consumer zoom on it. I think it cost me 150 pounds. So what I'm saying is, if you want to print big, don't believe that you need to have a big camera or a full frame camera. Sure enough, I will admit that a full frame camera would probably make it even better print than this. But whether you'd notice the differences, if you process it carefully and you sharpen it effectively and you choose the right image, I'm saying you can make as big a print as you like from Micro Four Thirds. Now, bigger cameras, as I say, bigger cameras, more shadow detail, less noise, even cleaner, but I don't need that. My sort of style doesn't dictate absolutely clean as a whistle images. I'm happy to have a little bit of noise and grain in there. I'm gonna continue doing this sort of shooting and testing with other cameras in the next year or so. It's just out of interest. Uh, I like to know myself what the kit's capable of, but it's also taught me that I'm not gonna neglect my old EM5. I'm gonna start using it again, even though I've got a Panasonic G9, which is recording this, which is fabulous for video. This is a bit, bit pants for video. This is adequate, perfectly adequate. And you can pick this combination up now, probably for about 300 pounds and go out and make massive poster prints. Anyway, that's all I've got to say on the subject for now. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get plenty of comments and feedback telling me I'm wrong, but all I can say is give it a go yourself. Try it yourself. Don't believe what you hear on the internet about you need a big camera, you need the, the latest lenses, you, you need lots of megapixels. Uh, you, you can't print big unless you've got a big expensive pro camera. It's not true. So yeah, let's wrap it up there. I hope you uh, enjoyed watching this. I hope you find it educational, uh, informative and entertaining. And uh, yeah, I'll see you out on the next trip. Thanks for watching.